Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 124 in the book of Genesis. Today, a wonderful question, one of the great questions of scripture. Jacob asks, asks it of his wife and also of the Lord, am I in the place of God? And I just love the question of scripture. So here's an excellent one, one of the best, am I in the place of God? Some, some, a question every single person has to ask. So yesterday, Leah kind of asked the same question. She didn't actually speak it, but she asked it of the Lord regarding having children. She was kind of wrestling with the idea of, can I use the gift of my reproduction to get my husband to love me and to irritate my sister? And will I use children to try to keep my marriage together? And eventually she disabuses herself of all three of those things and said, finally, on her fourth child, she says, this time I will praise the Lord. And interestingly, that's Judah and out of that line is going to come the Lord. Okay, today is from Genesis chapter 30, and this is a story about Rachel and Jacob. Genesis chapter 30, verse number 1. When Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, she envied her sister. She said to Jacob, give me children or I shall die. Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Great question, I'm gonna say it again. Am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Then she said, here's my servant, Billa. Go into her so that she may give birth on my behalf, that even I may have children through her. So she gave him her servant, Billa, as a wife, and Jacob went into her. And Billa conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged me and has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. Rachel's servant Billa conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, with mighty wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister and prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. So let's talk about this wives giving their servants to their husbands for children. Now this is done with the wife's consent uh, but I see no part of that that's commanded or condoned in Scripture, so I'm not sure the Lord's consent was in that part of it. It's done with the, uh, the husband's consent, because he obviously participated in that. And again, no part of that is commanded or condoned in Scripture that I can see. And it's not done with the servant's consent. I don't think she had sexual agency in this idea. So, so out of all this, all this, this wrestling and, and angst and stuff, come the 12 tribes of Israel and the tribe of Judah. And out of all this, all this family strife continues. It's going to, you know, selling Joseph, one of the sons that, that's coming here uh, into slavery in Egypt and attempted murder and yet forgiveness. Out of this barrenness, out of this wrestling, out of these knuckleheads comes redemption and out of bad situations, and here, I think, out of lack of sexual agency and misuse of sexual agency of those who had it, uh, comes redemption. So perhaps this situation could have been done sinlessly. I just don't see how. So out of all this and for all this, he's coming for all the knuckleheads in this story and all the knuckleheads that, that are listening to this podcast and giving this podcast, he came for us. So Jesus comes out of the tribe of Judah, making all things right, getting justice figured out for evil and sin, making all things right, having salvation for the truly unworthy, which is the only kind of people that get, get uh, saved, and interacting with and helping these people. Jesus comes down to help us. All right, back to our question. Am I in the place of God? So this is a real question that we best pause before. So regarding cre creation here, I'm in Iceland today, uh, regarding creation, are, are we without excuse with, with beauty? How about regarding activity and, and moral code to live by, not coveting what other people have? In this story, coveting what the sister has. Uh, how about regarding how to treat my fellow humans? Or should I follow what God suggests, treat them as I would like to be treated? So it's, it's decenterizing ourselves and putting the Lord as center. Am I in the place of God? Great question here. Jacob asks it today of his wife regarding who is the Lord of reproduction? 
am I in the place of God? I, I just want to pause for a second and ask those who may be listening that are not believers. First of all, fantastic. I am so glad that you're here. And may I suggest that if you don't believe in God, you are making yourself the ultimate creation. You are making yourself the ultimate creature, the ultimate judge, the ultimate agent, i.e. God, a.k.a. That's, that's God. So you're making yourself God. Am I in the place of God? May I, if you don't believe, I'm suggesting that you are making yourself in the place of God. So what I'm suggesting is that you ask with the great heroes and heroines that are asking here today in our in our scripture, am I in the place of the God? So if you don't believe, you know, acknowledge, and may I suggest you're putting your pla- yourself in the place of God. So for believers, flipping that, uh, for believers, you can easily, we can easily slip into this. So I think it's something to be careful of. You know, am I ultimately in the place of God like non-believers or in, a, in, in the case of believers, you, you keep slipping into this, this uh, attitude. So today, am I in the place of God? It's really a question of saying no. If you say that no, why no? I owe a, then I owe him a duty. Then I owe him obedience. Then I owe him my character formation. Then I owe him listening to the Holy Spirit. And I owe him walking with the Spirit, fighting temptation, taking uh, the way of escape, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, turning to him in, in, in worship, and then sharing my faith. Am I in the place of God? No, he is. And I best act accordingly. So if he's given you insight in this, maybe in this podcast or whatever, read the scripture yourselves. Let's act like he is God. Let's worship like he is God. Let's give like he is God. Let's forgive like he is God. Let's love like he is God. And let's share like he is God. So am I in the place of God? No. Thanks for listening.